So a button can also have an action. So with that button still selected, control drag at the bottom of your code now, above the last curly brace, like around here, after it did receive memory warning. And what we're gonna do is instead of outlet, we're gonna change it to an action. And we're gonna call this, well, we're gonna stop right there for a sec. And I only did that to show you guys how exactly I take the course. I'm over here with my computer, a notepad, and the course. So whatever I feel that I need to write down, I'm over here. And anything that I wanna I feel like I wanna say to you guys, I write it down here as well. And I'll show you guys some clips from this. Okay, and what we wanna do is when someone presses welcome, it shows a cool background and then some cool text that says like, hello world or hello Mark or whatever your name is. So we're gonna go to a fun website on the interwebs and it's called TextCraft. So you can see I take notes over here and then when I need to code something, I code it on here. So. That's the best way to do it. The best way to do it is, is to follow along. You know, not every time he's going to be creating an app for you. Sometimes you may just have to sit there and listen and maybe take some notes and whatnot, but this is my setup. But this is my setup right now, and it's been effective. But let's get into what this next section has been about. So we left off installing Xcode and that was, you know, we went through the developer account and whatnot. I'm not going to repeat everything. It's in the last video. Now starting off this, we're in lecture, lecture 8 of section 1, where we build a Hello World app. And if you've taken any type of programming course, they've gone through the Hello World app. And this one is a little bit different. I actually like it a lot. We create a button, and when you click the button, you display Hello whatever, Hello World, or Hello Your Name. In this case, for me, it was Hello Forest. But instead of just making it regular font, what we did was we went on textcraft.net and there we typed in what we wanted for it to display and we downloaded that and imported that image into our Xcode project. As well as we searched background on Google just to find some type of cool background. I chose uh, this Pokemon one just because it, it looked cool and I also imported that. So, so we downloaded the text image we downloaded the background, we imported those into our Xcode project, and we created images on our U controller and made the text one image, the background another image. As well as we changed the original white background, which is behind the background we just chose, to be a different color. So when we tested our app, it would show up as a different color. I chose welcome to be white because that was more contrast against my background that I chose. And at first what we did was we opened up the app before we did anything with the button. We just had the button text displayed and the background. So when you open it up, you just got something like this. Oh yeah. And if your simulator window is different, what you want to do is come up here to window, change it to about either 50% or 33% is my favorite. I guess it depends on your computer screen and you know what suits you. And then change it to one of those and it'll be fine. So basically what we've done now is we created the UI, we dragged the button onto the UI, we dragged two images onto the UI, and we created an IB outlet for each. And then we implemented the button, and then we had a bug in there that Supposedly he intentionally put into the code and we were able to fix that bug which was a renamed IB outlet that we had dragged previously and we fixed that bug. Lecture 9 he just shows us that we are able to get free help and free advice from the DevSlopes chat room that we've discussed before. The chat room company is Discord. What Discord does is any company or anyone is able to create a chat room with them. It has a very nice UI. It's very easy to use. It's kind of similar to Slack. So that was lecture nine. Lecture 10 was setting learning expectations. He goes over an email that he received from one of his, I guess, former students. He was going over the do's and don'ts of asking for coding help online. And basically he says, 
not to go into the Deathslips chat postcode and say it's not working. Uh, don't do this. Don't put this long line of code in here and be like, I can't, or how about this? This isn't working, please help, okay? And then five minutes later, uh, no one's answering, so you you're start tagging people and posting it in multiple channels. Um, I can't, can't get help, don't do this. This is not the right way to do it. Instead, what you're supposed to do, and I agree with him 100%, 99%, there may be some imperfections there, but instead of doing that, what you want to do is you want to Google your problem. Say, for example, your, your location service isn't working. So your GPS isn't working that you implemented in your app. You Google, you Google and say, you know, iOS location service not working or whatever your problem may be. And then there's going to be a lot of things, whether it's on Stack Overflow or anything else. And you may be thinking, well, look, I'm paying for his course. Why wouldn't he help me? They will help you, but part of being an iOS developer or any type of, of developer or engineer or programmer is you got to figure things out on your own. You can't just go ask, you know, your neighbor in the next cubicle for him to for him to basically fix your problem. You have to search it online. He says search for a solution this way for two hours. That doesn't mean type it in and search. That means that means two hours searching the problem, testing out the possible solutions, and basically taking record. I, I'm recommending this. He didn't say anything about this, but what you should do with developing is take records of everything that you've tried. So if you tried it this way, you don't want to be you don't want to forget that you tried it that way and then go back and then try it again. So what you do is you record every little way that you tried to solve it. After you've been doing that for two hours, you want to type in, you know, iOS, look, iOS GPS tutorial. So just different ways to search it up on the search engine. If his way didn't help, you can find something for free on the internet for the particular problem you're having, whether it's within the course or on your own app. And if you still can't find the solution, then go to chat. This is his recommendation. Then go to chat and then say, basically, you've tried this, 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 and that solution. Then you wait for a response. And then, you know, if you don't get a response within an hour or something, tag one of the TAs that are in the room. And he points out that you pay, well, now, now I believe it's like 150 or $200, but when he made this and when I bought it, it was 30 to 50 bucks. And he's like, you're paying $30, a one-time fee of $30. And he goes on to pull up places like Pluralsight, which is $30 a month. So let's see what other options we have besides Udemy. So here's Pluralsight, okay? Pluralsight offers um, a package, a standard package. It's $300 a year or $29.99 a month if billed monthly. Places like Treehouse, uh, the Team Treehouse, which I guess now is $100 a month. Then there's Team Treehouse. Okay, this is $99 a month, all right? And then a private boot camp where you can really get that one-on-one -on -one action which is like, you know, over $10,000 for about, I don't know, six weeks or a month or whatever it is. You've got the option that does give you one-on-one -on -one support, and that's called an in-person bootcamp or online. And I just pulled one of them up, but this one is $13,900. There's a very common price for bootcamps. In this case, you get people helping you, teacher's aides. You get teacher's aides. In most of these cases, it's not even the teacher, it's teacher's aides, okay? Then you've got Udacity. Now, on their website, it's gonna say sign up for free and they've got some free courses, but Udacity is $200 a month and you get no help from anybody. No teacher's aides, no teacher, nothing. Okay. And he goes on to say, like, there's a lot, we have a lot of resources for you, but you need to figure it out on your own first. And I agree with him in this point where you can't depend on, on everyone else to help solve your code. You're here to learn. And this is part of being a developer is using Google. Ask any developer, Google is one of their biggest tools or Bing or whatever they use. A search engine is one of their biggest tools. If they say it's not, they're lying, they're lying to you. And he, do, and he emphasizes that this isn't just for his chat. This is for, you know, posting on Stack Overflow, posting on Reddit or anything like that. As well as you don't wanna just post on there with your problem and then leave. Basically what you want to do is you want to help out someone else for every time you are helped out. So if you ask a question, help out someone else with a question. Or if you're not able to do so, 
remember that in the future. Be like, all right, you know, I've been helped out like four, five, ten times on Reddit. I'm going to, you know, give back to that community by helping other people out who were in my position. And just keep that in mind. Lecture 11 was a student success story. Which is, this was the second one that we've seen so far. And this guy made a made an app called Pokey Radar. Um, and yeah, our app made it from just being an idea a little over a week ago to being number two in the app store for all free apps, which is a little unreal. Um, I like seeing these uh, success stories because it really gives you a perspective of what's possible. You know, it, it gives you, it doesn't give you false hope, it gives you real hope. And he credits Mark's teaching style. It goes, again, it's Pokey Radar. it's an assistant app for Pokemon Go, and uh, all of it was made possible from taking DevSlopes courses. And uh, yeah, shout out to DevSlopes, learn to code. Uh, he said he's taken other courses, whether it's on Udemy or any other site, and he said Mark's course is a lot better and easier to retain and receive than all these other courses. Lecture 12 is just more testimonials. There's one guy, his name's Red Fu. Mark Price is an amazing teacher. Yeah, and you know, there's just a couple other people who I don't really know who they are talking about the course and how they like Mark Price and his teaching style and whatnot. And that ends up section one with lecture 12. And then we go into section two, and I'll go over that in my next video. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am finishing up this edit and posting it for you guys so you can see it. And I'm trying to keep up with editing and iOS development as much as I can. I hope you appreciate that. Please be sure to drop a like if you do. Subscribe so you don't miss the iDev journey. And have a good one.